it drives my wife crazy. You know, she'll teach a class of 20 and more than half are just black squares. I gotta watch the which way I turn my head. It looks like <laughs> my eyes are my two screens. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if uh, any more people are coming, so maybe we just get started. <laughs> As we lose Paul. There he's back. <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the referee panel. Um, Today we have uh, head referees from Maryland, uh, Paul and Randy. Um, I think they'll go over, a, do a brief intro of a couple of rules, um, and then we'll leave the rest of the time for uh, Q&A and discussion. So um, you can ask your questions on the Slido link that will be sent in chat room. Um, or since we have a smaller group today, you can just unmute yourself and ask the questions verbally. Um, so that's all for me. Okay. Well, I was just gonna sh share my screen if that's okay. And let me see, share screen, I'm gonna push that button. No, I want that one. So folks, if you go out there on the website, you're going to see two versions of the manual. One version is going to be uh, showing off the, uh, the normal traditional fields, where you got 12 by 12. And the next version is going to be 12 by 6. So yeah, 8. It's 12 by 8, Paul. 12 by 8. My apologies. So I've got Randy here. It's called a half field, but it's really a two-thirds field. <laughs> yeah, so that would explain why it looked a little larger than it should have been to me. So, um, so almost a half field, more like a two-thirds field. So we've got two-thirds of the field there. You know what it is? Two-thirds. Um, and the game basically is robots will start. I was going to draw little pictures or something like that. Robots are going to start on the... Uh, touching these lines here and touching the wall, along with touching the wobble stick. Um, and that's going to be part of the preset match. Um, there is randomization done for both the traditional and the, uh, and I'm going to expand the, uh, not that one, this one, so people can see the field. Sometimes it's better to point at a field like we are up there. So hopefully that, it's easier to see for people. So robots are going to start in this section here, touching this line, touching this wall, and touching the uh, wobble stick or holding the wobble stick, and touching either rings or holding rings or not holding any rings. Uh, so that is pretty much the setup of the game. Uh, once the bell goes, and uh, there are targets around the field. I guess in the case of this field, there's only going to be three targets. One to show for the back, like if you need the target to see the back. One to show the middle, which gets you to the first target zone. And another one that shows you where the, uh, the, the goals are. Um, the tower here has high, medium, low. There's a return piece and there are power shots or sticks that should be uh, done. The other thing is, there's a line of death going across here. But it's not a line that you need to stay out of unless you're launching into the upper goals and the power shot. Um, so scores, we can get into the scores later on, but that's 
pretty much the game. The one thing you should be aware of, um, you know, people are going to ask, what are the venues going to be like? Um, unless there is good information coming out around Thanksgiving time that we can go to traditional competitions with multiple teams, it's most likely going to start remote, remotely. Um, and uh, as it is suspected that as the season goes on, there may be some venues which will have a traditional tournament. So one of the things that you need to be aware of, if your robot, let's say in Thomas, shoots the medium middle goal here, be aware that when you have a full field, and let me show that, the middle goal is on the other side. The blue and the red are interchanged. So why they did that, who knows? But they like to have some sort of cross planning, planning and conflicts be developed. Um, so, so there are a number of things to be looking at. Um, when it comes to scoring in the remote situation, teams will be either doing it on paper and then later putting it into a computer system or a website or something like that. Um, there has been talk about setting up remote facilities so that if there is a tournament, teams can schedule to go there so they don't have to build and purchase their own field. Because it's pretty tricky because you don't want to do anything wrong because if you make a field and there's something not quite right and then you go into a real competition, robots going to play much different. Uh, the, uh, as I said, at times you get to move the wobble sticks. Uh, once it hits the uh, tally up mode, then you can put, then uh, it's really just a goal, a matter of getting as many of the donut rings as possible into the, into the tower and scoring as much. And then the end game involves depositing these wobble sticks outside the field, uh, parking a robot, whether it's on the line on a particular target area and, and whether or not they have any, any uh, donuts on the wobble sticks as well. I didn't think the parking was at the end there. I thought it was only at you're the autonomous. Right. It's probably only, in, you're probably right. Um, I'm looking right now real quick. Yeah, robot na navigating is only in the autonomous. Yes. So here's a good piece here. So let me just blow this up. So while we just instead of trying to guess, this is what I get. Yeah, this is what happens when we uh, just see the competition. So yes, so your time of scoring is delivering the wobble goal to the correct targets. That means moving it to one of these squares that I showed over here. Um, parking on the launch line, which is this white line. Uh, launching link rings into the goal. So it's three for the bottom one six and then 12 and you can even try to shoot the power shot target so that's 15 points a piece i feel that's pretty good I don't, so there's no other parking thing i thought somewhere i thought that i read there was another place you know, that you could park on it mm, well it's called navigating and navigating yes but that i don't see that so it's just called park there is no navigation piece here all right um and the driver control period, as I said, is really just launching rings into the goals. And I thought we could say would be shooting the power shots as well. I guess not. Paul, I think what you're talking about, the park, one of the laws that, you know, rules of the game is you got to park when a period ends. But that just means your robot is stopped and, you know, it's not moving. It, it's not a scoring park. It's, you, it's just stopping and, yeah, it's, it has to do with you know, are you ending the game later right. or whatever. Yes. All right, go back to <laughs> resume what you were saying. Okay, so the power shot targets, they are only, these guys here are only scored. I if I could do something there. There we go. So these guys here are only scored in the Atomis and the end game. Um, and the that's, that's something to keep in mind. So shooting and knocking these things back won't do anything um, until, until the end game is, gets there. 
Um, there will be a human player to, who will reset the uh, power shot targets. Uh, and, uh, and they need to be reset before the end game. However, there is a 10 second grace period after the end game starts for the human player to reset the power shot calls in case they forgot after two minutes. Um, and uh, putting the, the also on the end game pieces here, let me see if I can move this. The end game pieces, they can <clears throat> be put back to the start line, which is these red lines here, and or they could be a drop put in the drop zone. So you could put one or both in the drop zone or, or the same on the start lines likely. And regardless of where they are, as long as they uh, stay on, depending on how you move, the rings earn five points each on your wobble goals. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind is the more rings you put on your wobble goals, the less rings you have to do power shots and to do the tower. So there's only a finite number of those. I forgot how many rings they have to find. Uh, 20 total if you're playing a full field. It's only 10 if you're playing remote. So it's only 10, that's right. So you, if, if, you're, if your strategy is to put rings on the wobble goals, you obviously want to wait till the end of the game uh, to do that. And that is the, that's sort of the very main crux of the game without getting into individual rules. Um, just want to give a quick overview. Um, Randy, are there any? Uh, there's a couple gotchas that I think Randy wants to wants to go over. Well, you brought up the one where if you're playing remotely and then all of a sudden you go to a, a full field, <laughs> you're going to get bit if you're shooting the middle goal a lot. You know, you you, um, you know, maybe you're you're not accurate from past the launch line for the upper goal, and and sometimes you know they come a little short and go in the middle goal. If you're on a full field, all of a sudden, now you're scoring for someone else. <laughs> so, right. so, so um, if, you, if you hit the other field's power shot, they get, they get, they get triggered. And, uh, um, and if you hit, uh, hit their goal, it scores for them. Um, and if you're really bad and hit any other, hit their high goal or their low goal, uh, it just scores for them. So. So, so one of the things I wanted to bring up when, when you're scoring by yourself, so most of these things I'm going to talk about now are the remote matches, because that's what we'll start with. And, you know, the concept, you know, to get in the autonomous into a target zone, it's not just the base, it's the whole thing. So if it's laying over on its side and part of it is outside, the, uh, you know, you're not going to get the points, right? So the, the concept of completely in are, are the perimeters are walls. I hope it, my stupid phone's going to ring four times before it shuts up. <laughs> oh, great. Now you hear my voice. Too. All right. Well, as Brandon was saying, it's the completely in. Oh, well, even my phone's starting to ring. Okay. Now. But it goes infinitely up. The, the thing is the walls go infinitely up. So it's not, just where the base is, you know, if it was leaning for some strange reason at a 45 degree angle, you know, it's not touching the ground, but, you know, let's say the top of the wobble goal is not touching the ground, but it's still not inside. You don't get the credit for that. You know, so you got to be aware of things like that. And that's the outer perimeter of the red tape or the blue tape. Depending. Right. And, and yes, colors. it's, it's like soccer, any, any line markings, are part are also part of the area that they demark, and and the, the most part it's the launch line, yeah. right? So the launch line, you get that front edge that's toward the goal. That is the real edge, right? The 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 gaffer's tape is usually two inches wide. Well, you get that extra two inches. <laughs> yeah. Know, so it, so this 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 outer this edge between here and the goal. If it is infinitely up that the person needs to stay with it. And that's what you want to be behind. Um, I, I had a quick question. Sorry sure. to interrupt. Uh, so in autonomous, when you have to move the wobble goal into one of the three target zones, 
Um, is that what you're talking about where it has to be completely, completely inside? That's right. That's correct. All right, cool, thanks. Um, the, the thing, I did my quick read on Saturday of the rules. Um, the thing that worries me about the remote game where we're making the students, you know, the teams do their own scoring, there are some weasel words in there, it, it gray and fuzzy words about, you know, it, incursions of some part of your robot all over the launch line. And, and I'm going to press really for them to update at least the remote game manual and take that out because, you know, that, that I, I want it black and white. I don't want gray and fuzzy. <laughs> and gray and fuzzy, it, you know, I don't want teams that have to come up with interpretations. During a you know, regular season in the past, um, the head referees have meetings constantly to, you know, like every month to talk about what they've seen. Can we have more clarification on stuff that the teams aren't going to see? Um, and, you know, the interpretations, you know, the real first really tries to get everyone the ref consistently. And, and that's why we have these monthly meetings to get everyone on the same page. And I can't imagine they can pull that off for the remote teams um, this year. So it's like, yeah, you know, don't make it hard on the students. Just say, hey, it's got to be behind there. Oh, you know. Well. We, we got what we got, and uh, Randy and I, we, we were head refs from Maryland. Now we're sort of like unemployed volunteers because if they're doing remote defense, we're not going to have a volunteer referee job, so we now need to go and see about judging or something like that. Uh, I, I also forgot, here's the first caveat we should have started. None of this is official. Everything we have, everything we're talking about is based on past experience, but they can come up with new rules, modifications of existing rules constantly. And so anything we say tonight should not be taken as gospel and it can change, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> and and I want, I'm going to say that same caveat at the end of the meeting in case other people show up later. Whatever Paul and I say, yes, we, we've been head referees in the past, but because we're not having these conference calls and we haven't even talked amongst ourselves, the head refs, this is just all theory. <laughs> so folks will need to make sure they go to the forum, which is what I'm showing on the screen here. So and this, is the, this is a place here. So if we just we talk along the ways here, if you have questions, your team should be registered and your POC or your team should be posting questions out there to the forum. Uh, like, uh, but this isn't a referee forum. This is the team forum. There's a whole other set of forums for the referees. Don't worry about the referee forums. But and judges and scorekeepers and all kinds yeah, of other so stuff. Be sure yeah. to sign up for the FTC forum. It's for firstinspires.org. And, uh, and uh, that way you can see what's been posted and you can post, your team can post a question to it. Mm -hmm. So all teams get at least one POC that can post questions on the FTC forum. And POC I think means point of contact. Mm -hmm. I assume that's what he's saying. Point of contact, I don't know how it exactly is, but I just know that each team gets one member or one user that is able to post a question on the site, so. Mm -hmm. Um, can I, the, the, I have a quick question for you, like the, for that complete inside that uh, red uh, squares. The, um, so will somebody uh, remind the students if they want to uh, chat if this complete in or not? Uh, or like is, 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 like, is it complete on the uh, students to report that? Uh, for the remote? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be completely on the students. Uh, as far as I know, no no referees or scorekeepers in, in terms of, you know, in the past we had penalty refs and scorekeeper refs. I don't see that anywhere this season. So, yeah, it's completely okay. up to the students to understand. So that's, ah, that's the other thing I want from my soccer background. 
there's the there's the concept of you know you got to be exactly in line with the line otherwise you can get something called parallax parallax where you think it's inside but it's really not you know so you got to be very you know lined up with the edges to get a good reading is it completely in or not um, you know, that's one of the biggest complaints, you know, people calling the offside, hey, you weren't lined up with the, you know, second last player and, you know, you called it wrong. You know, luckily, <laughs> the line's not moving. In soccer, that line's constantly moving because it's the last defender. At least this one, the line doesn't move. It's just you got to judge, you know, is the robot over it or not. Or in the case of the wobble goal, is any part of the wobble goal over the infinitely high walls um, so that wouldn't score. So, right. so you know, Oops. go ahead. So you can see that uh, they do have a section in the, in, in the definitions inside completely and completely inside. And basically, it, we, as, as Randy's tried to stress, an object that has crossed into the upwards verticals at a right angle to the playing field extension by an area's boundary. Inside an area is entirely within the upwards vertical definition. The, and that's why whether it's the wall or the, in this case, the tape, the outer edge, the tape of the things. They also have completely on and completely off. We don't have, I don't think we have anything that's completely on to, to, to worry about judging this year. Um, uh, the information for how teams manage their competition stuff, or at least their scoring, is in a different manual. And I'm going to go to that. It's, in, it's not in that, not there. So I want to pull that up. So I'm going to go to remote events. So if you want to see about how to do the scoring for a remote event, you have to go to the game, to the part one manual. I spent some time reading through that. Um, and they, they, they pretty much go over everything that's done. The, it's, it's when you start to get into to the fairy score, and they don't have a whole lot that's offered. And I'm trying to figure out they have a place here. Here we go. So it's all based on the delivery partner. So. Everybody has to be registered through team registrations. Um, and I thought I read it here where the program for fire, that's the Chesapeake region, they will give instruction at that point on how to do the score, whether it's uh, sent by email or direct entry into a web page, which then gets automatically fed into the first revised scoring system. I had, a, I had a quick question uh, regarding first Chesapeake specifically. Um, so I'm from Virginia and I was wondering that I, as far as I remember, I think that both Virginia and Maryland are, have hybrid events, right? Where the robot game will be in person, but the, uh, but the judging everything will be virtual. Uh, I think I, I attended the, the first Chesapeake thing right before kickoff. And I think that's something like they were, what they were saying. So, our robot competition game will be in person, right? Uh, I wouldn't commit to that. It, uh, have they found someone that actually would host, uh, you know, an I event think, like that? I think that's their goal. Um, I think okay. details, are, details are still scarce about that. They need to find locations. They need to verify they can do it. And, you know, they, need to, they also need to establish that teams are willing to do that. You know, some teams may not be able to, for example, cross state lines. Uh, because of the COVID restrictions. Some teams may not be able to meet like that because of their school restrictions. So it, it's, it's a scheduling thing because, you know, the, because this is, you know, we see an event and we go there and we're there for maybe one day and there's set up before and there's set up after the day. When you get into this hybrid or remote thing, I read in the instructions and that's where I'm trying to find it. I read where it has to be done, could be as many as seven days that you can enter, do your competitions and right. enter your scores into the system. Right. I mean, first, Ch first Chesapeake is trying to work within the remote requirements, but do something a little bit more interesting. I mean, I'm not, I'm not party of that 
that plan. I just know what they've told as well. Um, so they're trying to make it a little bit more interesting for students by letting them get together in a larger venue other than their, their basement. Um, but, I, you know, I assume they're still going to run it as multiple remote events just in a single location uh, in, yeah, in a one-day period. You know, they may set up a single field so nobody else can purchase and people can come, but if they actually have a limited number of teams get to go to a competition, that's a totally different thing. Yeah, I think that's a goal. We have. For the person that asked that question, I think mm -hmm. that is the goal, but I wouldn't commit that that actually is going to happen. Right. Right. I think Got that it. It, that's just you are. Now, I see Heather has posted a, a note about... Um, the rings, the rings can only be touched and put back into play during the driver control period. You cannot be touching the rings during the autonomous. They're oh. being shot into the goal or whatever. Well, you're, you're, yeah, this, yeah, this is, yeah, so we're talking, yeah, we're talking, we're talking about the rings that are in the, uh, after they go through the scoring, or are you talking about rings that fall outside the field that need to be picked up? That would be done by field personnel only. I I have a quick follow-up question to that, actually. Um, so, uh, are you able to get rings during autonomous, or are you just stuck with the three rings that you start out with? You, and... You're stuck with the three that could be on the robot, plus the up to four that can be on the floor, right? There's, there's up to four on the floor. So, you're guaranteed, if you're doing a remote match, there should sure always be three already in the back at the goal for the human player to put on once driver control starts. Yeah. And that's one of my complaints as before we started this. If you get really unlucky and, and you get, you know, you roll the die where, you know, there's like no, or I guess there's one ring on that center stack plus your three. <laughs> you can't score as many points on autonomous as a team that, that rolls, you know, the, for that back corner and they get the four on the floor plus the three they've got on the robot. So it's like, yeah, I don't like that at all. Oh, this is game man. I was looking for that section. So in game manual two, I think it's like the second last page, I think. Um, there it is. It's the one that's got the dice on it. So yeah. yes, as Randy says, if you get the one and the four, no rings. See, there's no ring here except the donut I just drew. Um, if you get the uh, two and the five, you get one ring. And then if you get the uh, the uh, you get the nine roll, you get uh, you get the three and the six, you get the uh, four rings. So um, if you're in a tournament match, then it's it helps to equalize because you have your the other alliances. At least one other alliance is getting that. But if for some reason your dice are loaded to always roll a one or a four, <laughs> why would you get dice to do that? But uh, you would have less rings. To do that because they're not going to be fed during a Thomas at this point. Right, but yeah, once once driver control starts, you can you know reinject the rings as soon as they get scored. Um, I also want to touch base on the human player. I want to see what they had about the, when the human player can do it. Uh, just supplies and sets. So. It, it's yeah, it's 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 during the. It, the driver control, though, I, I, I saw that explicitly that they can't be touching stuff during the autonomous. Yeah. Right. So, guys, I have a, a series of questions, <laughs> and and these are <clears throat> these are based on having read the manual pretty thoroughly. Now, I, I understand that you're not necessarily going to be able to give me answers to these, but I wanted to bring them up in case <clears throat> when you go on and talk to other co other referees and have the high level discussions, perhaps you could track some of this stuff down. Yeah, I don't have referees, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll, we'll going to talk amongst our past referees. Yeah, when you talk among yourselves. Um, okay. We're unemployed referees. So, so the first question that comes to mind is, I couldn't find anything in the manual that said or implied that during a remote event where you only have half a field, that you can shoot into that middle goal and get points. It's in there. It's it, it just the way right. they draw it. They, right here. They, but I mean, you get the, example, you, photo, it's, it's got the points for middle. It's got the points for middle, even though it doesn't right. say, hey, they're all there. You, you still get them. They're, they're wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be a little bit? Normally, it would be on the other side. That's right. right. Normally, it would be on the other side. But the way the remote manual is set up, it you can get you, 
you do get the credit for a middle goal, you know, even though you're a red team right. and, and usually that'd be a blue in front of you, right. you get the credit because it's very explicit in that drawing that Paul's got up that's red and blue. But if you go to the remote manual, it's all black. You know, all the goals are black. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So my next question is, um, the middle goal, just so you know, is still scorable even in the uh, tournament. You just have to make sure you're shooting the correct side. Right. Got it. Got it. Okay, good. All right. So my next question relates to rings on the wobble goal. So rings score if they are supported by the wobble goal. Mm -hmm. I can't see anywhere that says whether you are allowed to be holding the wobble goal when they get scored at the end of the match. Uh, you can't so be touching a ring. You know, there's, there's. Uh, I understand that, but if I was holding the top of the wobble goal and there were seven uh, rings on it, would they count? All right. So. So I can tell you, I haven't found it in there anywhere. So it may be one of those ones that you know need to be asked. And I, I will post once I open up the forum. So that would be in the end game. So wobble delivery. Um, if it sits on the start line, it must break the first. It must be on the line. Must, if it's going to drop zone, uh, it could be tipped over. And even when you look at the rings, it doesn't matter whether it's what orientation it is. However, there's an overall rule about the robot touching when the, uh, when the and I read about half an hour ago before we got online, that it automatically. Right, well, I understand that the, the, the wobble goal wouldn't st score for placement. But the question is, would the ring score? Hmm. I have not read that de amount of detail. To right. That's a good question. Stick that's, that on your list. That's a good one. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here's, here's my big question. <clears throat> and this one, I don't know. So in the past, a certain scoring strategy has not been allowed on games. And that's the closed loop scoring, where you score the piece through a goal, it lands on your robot, you score it again, you score it again, you score it again. That's possible in this game through the low goal. So you could be sitting your robot right in front of the chute. The, the, the ring could go out of the chute into your robot back into the low goal. And you could probably come up with a mechanism that would do that very fast. So my question is, are they going to, I can't find anything that disallows it now. So the big question is, are they going to disallow it next week? Right. I don't, I, I didn't see anything that disallowed it. And that was one of my theories is, yeah, you just park there and you feed them back in as fast as they can. There's nothing that says that has to be like in Cascade or some of the others that it has to touch the floor or something like right. that. But this is the classic thing that I changed the rules two, three weeks into the competition. Exactly. Because yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll start asking that question and they'll say, oh. Yeah. So, all right. So you haven't heard about that. All so right. This, this is the beta version of the manual. And I'm under the impression that they're, still consternating over how to play the games. Right. Um, let's go down the game specific rules. So, so the other thing I thought you might ask, I think you only can put the rings on the wobble goal before you drop it over the edge and put it outside. That's true. You, 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 can't be, you can't put it out naked and then add rings to it. Why not? Just out of because because you're going outside the, the wall multiple times then. But wouldn't oh, that be okay in tele uh, in end game because you have to do it anyway? I, I think you get one and done. <laughs> All right, well, I, I, I'm, I don't I'm, I don't think it's that hard, but uh, I would have expected that it'd be loaded. But that's that's a good question, though. Please do go ahead. I've I've gone to this thing: human player ring handling, GS4. Human player may not introduce rings into the playing field before the start of driver control period. So somebody one was asking that question whether or not the uh, human player is doing anything at time. It's much like last year's game where with the deep depot, the player just sits there and watches the game until it starts. Um, and they can only do it during... Well, no, no, no. We got to take that back, Paul. The weird thing they could do in autonomous is they could move that whole stack of Legos. They're not autonomous. They couldn't introduce anything into the field, but, but they could move the stack from that, the initial that, 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 that didn't change up the, the number of stuff in the field. I'm talking about things. That's right. All right. Yeah. Could they re can they rearrange stuff? It doesn't say the human player can't rearrange, so it's, they can do all they want. Um, um, so, 
So anyway, that was my questions, and I'm 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 fine with those answers. Thanks. Uh, and something we should be aware of. Randy was talking about storing stuff. Rings should be returned to the playing field as quickly as practical. So as soon as that thing scores and they can get their fingers on it, it goes pop right back out. So they can't hold it off for somebody special to get. Uh, I had a, I had a quick question about um, about scoring the about shooting the rings. So uh, this is kind of a weird question, but if you were to shoot all three rings at once, as in like just shoot all three of them in one shot, I guess, uh, would that count? I guess or yeah, the the game the the game animation actually shows them th shooting like three at once. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, they, they do them in sequence, but it doesn't matter. There's, I, there's, if you could shoot all three at once, I guess that'd be cool, but it would be in sequence, I would imagine, with most, most designs. Uh, well, yeah, you can sort of, you want a shotgun approach if you want to knock over all three. I don't think it's <laughs> like bowling where you're going to get the seven ten split with one ball. Yeah. Uh, and another quick question is like, Oh, actually, a quick follow-up to that um, is if one ring does hit two of the power shot targets somehow, I, I don't have the field, so I, I don't know if that would be if, if that's physically possible, but that's, that's fine. I think that's fine. If you, uh, if you can knock over two with one shot, I, I didn't see anything in the rules about that. You know, it's just at the end of autonomous, how right. many of the three are pitched backwards? It doesn't say how they got pitched backwards. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we got to remember that you shot it from the correct side of the launch line. Right, 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 right. right. Other than that caveat, <laughs> that yeah, you had to shoot it from you know half field or more away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it it should be. <laughs> it only gets counted you know once. It's not like it can knock them over multiple times. And you know, the other thing I'd remind the teams, you know, if any of the three did get knocked backwards you probably want to reset those as fast as possible once you're in the driver control so that you right. don't forget so that when you get to end game, <laughs> you don't lose the chance to score those. They, they do have that 10 second window, yeah. but if they're already knocked backwards and you forget to reset them, you don't get credit for that. So the last question I have is um, I, I read somewhere in the game manual that there's like a 15 or 16 foot launch limit. Like you can't, like the rate, like um, the maximum distance that you can launch is 16 feet or something like that. Yeah, it's um, a safety thing. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's part of robot inspection. And if okay. It, if an inspector, if this was a tournament, we can't, you know, if this was a tournament and the inspector ha and, the, and the referee is watching the game and somehow the robot turned 90 degrees, shot, and it went 20 feet, landed on the next, on the field next to us. Um, <laughs> He can request after the game is over, they would take you to the side and they would request that you be re-inspected for safety. So, yeah, so, you know, what's 12 times 1.4, right? You know, the diagonal of a 12 by 12 is going to be about 17 feet. <laughs> so, gotcha. yeah, you got to be able to score from either corner within a 12 by 12 field. Right. But, so, you but, know, but yeah, it's, it's purely a safety thing. They I mean, don't want if you People were shooting, if you were shooting at the top, if you were shooting at the top goal from the corner, that's twelve feet away. So chances are that thing's going to move another twelve feet if that goal wasn't in there. Yeah, at the peak or if you the, miss or something. Yeah, so that could actually you might. I mean, it seems like actually sixteen feet a little short of requirement. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> so uh, I was going to ask. I mean, is that measured in, in during inspection, or I mean, for remote events, is that I, like? I thought it'd be during maybe during the field inspection, we'll see how far you can shoot. I can't imagine them doing it we haven't made, inside the pits. <laughs> yeah. Not, it's not a mandatory thing. It's something that they would talk with the inspector. They've loosened up those type of things and it becomes a situation as if if you know if if it happens, then they know they need to be reinspected to, to ensure that the robot won't go past sixteen feet or they need to be understand whether they can power down their motors so they don't do that. Um, so those, those are things. Um, the uh, interesting thing uh, I don't see yeah. in the rule book is, you know, the human player needing to have a mask on, you know, it's like, 
the, the, the netting, even on a real field, doesn't go up very high. So people are going to have to be watching not only their robots in, in a real tournament, but their partner robots, <laughs> because it can be getting hit from one of four robots, even, you know, a valid shot. Mm -hmm. you know, it could whack them upside the head. So I'm, I'm surprised, you know, that the netting on a real field isn't higher. Yeah. Uh, Paul and Randy, I think there is some questions uh, on Slido. Um, some like you guys already covered, some uh, haven't yet. Uh, how, how do you want to... Um, uh, well, let's just... Go, this question. Let's go... Let's go. So we already oh, maybe, uh, Samuel, can you share the Slido screen so that we can probably on the screen then then um... okay. Uh, there was a question about randomization. So the randomization will be done as it usually is after the uh, once the referee says you know gets everybody initial initiated. Um, and tells everybody not to touch their controls, that's when the field will be randomized. Yeah, but that doesn't tell you how you do it on a remote field. Remote field, you're supposed to do that. I, I got, I pulled that up, it's done the same way. Except yeah, but who, are you, you know, are they, are they gonna give you a tool or they, you just roll your own die? You're gonna roll your own die. I don't know, it depends. It all depends on the software that they provide. Yeah. All right, let's 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 start looking at, at these questions here in the blue. All right, pick one. It just looks super huge to us. I, I don't even know that first one, that top one, as soon as it touches the ground. Um, I, I'll have one, to read. That's, that's the one that... Uh, that's what the one Phil as wants soon, to know. As soon as the <laughs> rings enter the goals with the power shot that, or the goal, as soon as it, after it gets there, even if it's jammed in there, the human player is to return them immediately. Now, I don't know what immediate is, but as fast as the person can do that. But that's fine. It doesn't say, though, the ring has to touch the ground before the robot picks it up. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about what happens once it comes back. It's the human. Yeah, you know, once the human lets go, that, that chute doesn't even touch the ground. Yeah, it, that's it's going to release it a few inches up. So the, it, the human player is going to drop it through the chute, and they're going to drop on the floor in the, in the arena. I'm sorry, in the field. is. Now, if something gets shot outside the field, outside of the control of the human player, then that's where the field people would be the referees would decide if and when they want to reintroduce that, that game item back into the field. But I, I haven't seen anything that says that ring has to touch the plain surface, the 12 no. by 12 surface, before no, a robot picks it up. No, it doesn't have to, Randy. There's, there is no requirement. And that's, well, that was with the question. It, it, it says touch the ground. I'm, I'm not even sure you have to ha have it touch the ground. Oh. The, w the current way the rule is written, the rules are written. All right. All right. Next one is, is there a check for the correctness of the field for a remote event? Um, if, you are, if you've got one of those fields and it's an anti-marked field, that's about, about the best you can do as long as you can put it together as best as you can. If you don't, you make it harder for yourself, I guess. Uh, well, let's, let's go back to the soccer thing, right? I used to have to set up soccer fields. You don't want a rhombus. So the way you find out whether the, you have a rhombus or not is you, you measure both the diagonals, and they better be the same number, right? So you take this, you know, the, the hypotenuse and do that. That's not in the instructions at all. So the, the field... No, is, but that, that the question is, how do you, you know, measure for correctness of the field? Well, to make it square, that's one thing that you're going to do. You're going to measure the two diagonals. Well, that's keeping it square is easy because the mats will, don't, don't do that. There's no requirement for anyone to buy mats for a remote field. Uh, the party and the kit? Includes I'm that. saying if you do not buy the remote field, the only thing you got to buy this year are the wobble goals and the rings. You do not have to buy the one foot high you do not have to buy the goals. You do not have to buy a floor. All right. Well, that's that's the extreme thing. So, correctness is basically just going through. There are diagrams that say how high things should be, and it's, the tolerance is plus or minus an inch. That's right. We we should bring that up. 
<laughs> Anytime you measure, if it's within an inch, you're good. Randy, I'm going to let this next one be yours. This is your favorite question. All right. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 what I, and I brought this up. Uh, I guess I'm looking at the white line one. The I'm third sorry. one. Yeah, the, the third one. If the robot is inside the white line, the, the, the definition of inside being completely in, it also includes any arms, especially an arm that's actually doing the shooting. Now they've got this weasel orange box after um, scoring the, the, the power shots or the high goals. There we go. That a, um, a uh, you know, Can I show non that second? inconsequential. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Paul. I'm just going to take the screen for a second. Yeah. Uh, I think it's this one. Sure. So, so, the so while that comes up, the other thing is, when, when you're scoring and giving penalties, let's say you scored illegally, you still get credit for whatever goal it went into, but then you got to subtract the penalty. So, you know, if it's a major penalty, and I can't remember what the majors this year are, or if they're 20 and 5. We'll, we'll go to that one. But this is the, uh, yeah. in, in section 4.5.2, under the autonomous period. Right. Yeah, and, it's also in, uh, the other one. And 4.5.3. Right. And, and it's in, oh, well, it's, no, it's, it's not in that one. But in those two sections, they all say the intent of tower scoring for to be completely in the launch zone to score the mid and high goals. That's right. In the case of a Thomas, that includes the power shot. Yeah, because that's in the previous section about the, po yes. yeah, the power shot. And right. the same goes for, that would apply also in your, your end game as well. My complaint is the next sentence where it says <laughs> in that orange box, Go back to the orange box. You want the orange box? Sorry, I was going to show what the, the penalty the, was. The orange box there we go. about inconsequential robot extension. I, I want them to pull that out of at least the remote because even if you got referees, the referee, referees will argue all day about what is inconsequential. You know, what are you going to allow? And it's just to keep everyone sane. I'd really like that sentence to be gone. And it and just a strict, it's gotta be completely in. Now, you know, they might say, oh, it was like a wire or something like that, you know, a control wire or a, a zip tie was passed. Well, fix your zip ties, fix your wiring. So nothing's sticking out. Um, so the thing is here, Randy, if you have an arm that slings stuff and it extends its outside your robot, and you know that happens all the time when you chuck something, then obviously you're going to want to stand back, have your robot stay appropriately distance from the line so that arm doesn't cross over. And, if and that's what I want them to do. Yeah. And, and uh, the same thing is uh, with zip ties and other things. The referee sees that, that they can, they, they can talk to the team after the competition, after the match and tell them that, to tuck them in and not do But we that. don't have any referees for the remote. That's why I don't want that second sentence I in know, the remote. I well, know, it's not going to go away because the first won't do that. Uh, <laughs> can, you guys go back, can you guys go back to the questions? Because there, sure. was a, there was a comment later down that might answer that whole thing about controlling the, uh, the field, controlling the scroll down one to the right, uh, what? Uh, so GS6 at the bottom of that page, that could be the answer. Part B says controlling positioning. There you go. That's why you can't do it. So ah, okay, I, I like that. All right, GS6 says it's got to hit the floor first. All right, but that still doesn't say you can't pick it up immediately and shove it back in. Right, well, that's okay. But yes, thank you, Mr. Phil, for... <laughs> no, no, someone else posted that. I don't know who it was. Yeah, all right, well, bring it to our attention. It's the, it's the very first sentence, so I can uh, just show you. Yeah, when you go to that rule, it's in the very first sentence. That yeah, says yeah. That. okay. 
So you can't, they, you can't have a robot that's self-fed. I like to go back to the year that they had the Frisbee robots for FRCs. And they can literally just, the human player can literally feed the Frisbee in the robot and it just sits there the entire competition, shooting everything to the uh, high target across the field, so. All right, what's the next one? So the power shot targets only get reset after, well. After a Thomas. After a Thomas and before, in case you bump one ahead of time, that's you got to reset, you want to reset before the um, end game. That's correct. So if it's not reset within 20 seconds, 20 seconds at the very end of the game, you lost making points on that particular power shot arm. Um, let's see, what's the next one for us? We answer that. I answer that one. Well, go back up. Is it right? We initialize after randomize. Uh, we yes. randomize after initialize. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's, that's true. That's yes. true. All right. Do you think they'll revise the 16 foot rule? I think we already discussed that. It's, once again, that is not an inspection criteria. It's a referee's prerogative if they feel they have a dangerous robot and it's shooting way too far or, or, or whatnot. So I doubt they'll change that. However, if you have a robot that pushes that limit, you may want to post on the uh, forums to see how strict it is. Because even if you have the robot that's sitting in the corner at 17 feet, if you went to the edge of the corner, the goal is not in the edge of the corner, it's more over and plus the robot's about 18 inches big. so it's yeah, 16 feet is right there at that point. So, okay, what about, what's the next one? Yeah, scroll down because we already did this thing about hitting the floor. We hit the floor. All right, we don't have any more questions now, so we can, we can step through some of the rules and quickly highlight them <laughs> as we go through. Yeah, it's like, Six, what is it, 728 now? <laughs> Our hour is almost up. Well, we would just go to the game specific. So let's go to the game specific rules. And I'll just pull up the simple sheet here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop out, guys. Yeah. Thanks for Good that. Good seeing you, Mr. Phil. Yeah, thanks for the update. Bye bye. All right. Safe, safety rules, they haven't changed. They're the same ones. Um, the only thing is, if you're playing remote games, you don't, there's no referee to kick you out. You, simply, you just don't start your match until you have safety gear. That's all there is to it. Um, if somebody was asking the, that question, I think it was Mr. Phil who just left. If you're holding on to a wobble stick and it has rings on it. Obviously the wobble stick won't score based on its location, but do the rings score on the wobble stick? So that's a good question to pat to to ask on the forum. Um, excuse me. Let's get down to GS twelve. Hello? Okay, so Randy's gonna take a call. Hey, I'm on a call. Let me call you back in about ten minutes. All right. So basically, uh, you don't have to worry about this if you're on remote. Human player worn by, for, uh, I'm going to have to go up to the definitions. This table's too simplistic to look, so. All right, so there is a GS1 robot extension outside the playing field boundary. If you remember, the field looks like this. There's only one place that the robot needs to be extending, that's in this direction during the end game. That's the only time that would happen. Whether well, it's to put the wobble sticks out here and then possibly putting the rings on the wobble sticks while they're out there, uh, if that's allowed. Somebody might want to confirm that in the forums. So it should not be extending in any direction here. Um, 
There might be incidental extension depending how your dumper is on the bottom level, but uh, I, I, that's, that's what it means by inadvertent extension. Um, if in the normal gameplay, if something slightly sticks out, then that's not a penalty. But if you have a major swing out, and let me pull this cat out here. So she's quiet. There we go. <laughs> Otherwise, she will continue to meow. So let's get back down to the GS rules. Almost there. The next one, human player station. May change position. So the human player may change position. So if you remember back on that field there, he, he, knew, he will he move from the power shot to the uh, ring shoots. Um, that's, that's what they mean by position in the human player. Grasping scoring elements. The only elements that the robot may grasp are rings and wobble goals. Otherwise, it gets penalized for grasping invalid game elements. We already talked about human player ring handling. Um, uh, so it's, I'm trying to see what the extent of the penalty here. So it's really a warning mostly here. Uh, drive team touching the robot after the driver station. It's usually a minor penalty, unless it's a strategic that moves up usually. Uh, possession of limits of scoring elements. This is nothing new. Uh, they talk about plowing and controlling. You need to look at those things. Uh, ring support. Here's something. So they do expect you to pick up the rings by the wobble goal. Uh, so that's the only time you can hold more than three. Uh, and, and I think that's for, you know, the thing that says you should put your rings on top of the wobble goal before you put out the drop zone. Well, I don't think Because it's not going to, you know, you're not going to violate that rule. You can only carry one wobble goal at a time. Otherwise, your robot might start wobbling. And it, they got a major penalty, for, a minor penalty for a major and minors with that. Launch up gain elements. Um, rings, any ring launched over a boundary that is not the tower goal boundary will receive a minor penalty. So if you go and hit the referee, you definitely get a minor penalty right off the bat. So, so it has to be uh, it has to be uh, shooting over that end with the with the uh, with the towers. Uh, obviously, they don't want you launching those wobble goals. Um, that's a major penalty. Uh, wobble goal constraints: uh, robots may not place rings onto wobble goals except during the end game, so that can only be done during the end game. Uh, and then uh, they got robots out, they got illegal tower scoring and power shots if the robots are outside the launch zone or cross that yellow line. Um, and I just want to drive through the game specific rules again. So there is a warning to the human player if they were not following the rules, if they weren't returning the rings or they were doing something they weren't supposed to. And then it can start going up to minor penalties. But that T is important. You only get one warning for a whole tournament. It's not per match. That's interesting. I, the problem is that's hard to figure out. Well, actually, that's easy to figure out. This is the remote stuff. So you can only do it remote. So and here's the deal with the remote stuff. Since it's, there is no camera, I thought and when I heard they were going to do things from Lou, I thought basically we're going to have referees like myself sitting and watching people play these games and score them. You know, maybe we not score them, but at least be a, an extra set of eyes on the game. There is nobody that's going to be watching these things. This is really goes to the gracious professionalism and the credibility and accountability and honor of the students. So mentors that are out there listening or older students are mentoring other students Please, please enforce that, that this is a honesty thing. It's like having a table that has eggs for sale and there's a cup there where you put your money in it. So they expect you to pay for it. Um, GS5, drive teams touching their 
driver station afterwards, a minor penalty for each time. Um, also, here's something I didn't pick up before. If they touch it after randomizations, the robot is not able to earn the wobble gold delivery score. So even if the robot still went ahead and scored, you know, because it's an autonomous and it's running, once that minor penalty, they don't, they lose the ability to, they lose the ability to get that score after making the delivery. Control of procession rings, one, one, one for each and another five seconds. Control of procession of wobble goals. I doubt we're gonna have any robots trying to control two wobble goals at the same time, but who knows. Launching game elements, um, only allowed over the, only uh, allowed where the uh, tower is and they shouldn't be watched, you can't be launching the wobble goal. Um, wobble goal constraint. Uh, you can only carry one and the illegal, illegal scoring of being past the launch line. So those are, and uh, Randy's right, the WT is the tournament warning. So there's the definition for that there. Um, be aware, once again, there may be some, as, as we roll into January and get towards the end of January, either hybrid or full out tournaments might be available for teams to do. So, any of you have any other comments? Um, I'd like to make myself available to a team, you know, that, you know, you're building your robot in October, November, whatever, before the competitions, and you've got, you know, a handmade, or, you know, homemade remote field, and you want me to zoom in, I'd like to make myself available to say, all right, you know, I'll watch you score, you know, you know I'll watch a match, you tell me what you came up with a score, we might actually do a running commentary, this is, Again, it's, it's like a scrimmage or something like that. And I'll say, yeah, you should have counted that. You should have counted that. Hey, could you, could you look down that line and make sure that, you know, it's completely in or, you know, that's completely behind that line? I, you know, just offer up another set of eyes that that's, have, has done scoring before, you know, and, and done refereeing just to give you, you know, some ease of mind that, yeah, you're, you're not messing up big time. Yeah, that's very kind of you, uh, Randy. All right, last call for questions. That's a game synopsis in an hour. Thank you for being excited and willing to do the robotics. I, I understand that the excitement of robotics competition is, is going to be lacking until we get together, but it is hopeful that uh, as the season progresses, we will have more and more games be full tournaments. Um, they will probably be doing a, if they do remote tournaments, they'll be doing a league system, but at the same time, they will allow for judging because they typically, we don't typically have leagues in Maryland, so it was always full qualifiers with the judging of stuff. So they will probably be doing the league system because you really can't have a tearing off with the finals, the semifinals, and, and the final competitions in a remote environment. There's just, there's just no way to do that. Um, so those are things to caveat, and good luck, everybody. Yeah, I, I lowered my camera to show my – I'm actually a mentor for an FRC team, and this is one of our most recent uh, team team T-shirts. So I'm, I'm hoping by an FRC season, you know, FTC figures out all the hard stuff and <laughs> FRC we have a lot easier time. As you can see, I don't have my referee shirt on because I'm unemployed. <laughs> You're unemployed. So uh, I will, I may find, you may find me uh, in the interview panel for judging. So that's why I plan, that's my plan for this year. Okay. I think judging's a lot harder than refereeing, so I haven't volunteered for that. Uh, and, and one of the things they said, the judging, it's handy if you've done a team. I have never run an FTC team. I've, you know, all, the only thing I've ever done in FTC is ref. I've, I've mentored the 
with the road bees several years ago uh, for a number of years, for like seven years. Um, and uh, I've also done judging for the Lego type stuff. So it's mm. very enjoyable. So. All right. Well, I hope f people, you know, got something out of this. And as I said, I, I want to make myself available, um, you know, put out my email address, I guess, uh, Mr. Lynn, you know, the RPR 5906. You know, if people want to contact me, I'm more than happy to answer questions or, you know, act as an extra set of eyes. Okay. That's, you know, yeah. To watch. I will let uh, Heather uh, alert the, uh, the list. But, uh, but thank you guys for the very insightful analysis. I mean, although this is not official, I think uh, at least I, I learned a lot from your analysis. That, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Yeah, okay. hope, uh, we have another uh, future uh, discussions that, yeah, when the time is right. Okay. All good. right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.